Hi Miriam, welcome to Zero to Pro. Wow, excellent. You, uh, you, what's it called? A home run? Is that what they call it in America? You hit a home run. Um, really amazing beginning. Looking forward to seeing what you do. Fantastic. Okay, let's jump in. So, uh, oh, just a quick note that I remind everybody, or not remind, that I let you know. Um, try every week, like you've done this week, to do the homework and the photo shoot. Okay, it really is important to do both. However, if for whatever reason time is crazy short and you have to choose between either the photo shoot or the homework, do the photo shoot. Okay, the photo shoot is really the most important part of everything. Getting out there, um, taking pictures, getting comfortable with the camera, comfortable with clients, with uh, with with your subjects, posing, finding locations, etc. The homework is good to help you get the ideas like deeper inside um, and you do have to do both. Don't get me wrong, you should do both. But if there's a choice between one or the other, you should go with the photo shoot. Okay, so this is great. A triangle, beautiful, really, it's a very, very uh, nicely composed. What I would try and do, have a, have a think if you could do this yourself. Um, I mentioned this to everybody, is try and set up a still life in a way where you don't actually see the triangle unless you move to a certain position, which means you could have, for example, um, a battery and a phone. Now, if I, let's do it from you over here, my battery is smaller than the phone. So the battery is much smaller than the phone. But if I put the battery, do you see, if I put the battery up close to you, then the phone becomes small and we've created a triangle. So that triangle doesn't really exist unless you get unless you get to a certain vantage point where you'll be able to see that clearly so thinking in regards to triangles in compositions um there's a lot of stuff a lot is to do with your vantage point in that things don't always look like a triangle or a square or circle in front of you but by getting yourself into a certain position and because of perspective when things are being bigger things are being smaller you can end up with a triangle that only exists in one place so just keep that in mind but this is a really good example i like you've got sharp focus um great good stuff okay this is a texture that is for sure a texture um it is considered a hard texture this is also kind of a hard texture. Textures generally fall into two categories and everything in between. You have hard textures and soft textures. Hard textures are more dynamic and energized and soft textures are much more relaxed um, and passive. Okay, so this is two good examples of hard textures. Very good, well seen. Patterns we described as being reoccurring sequences like geometric sequences. This is exactly what this is. Um, as a photographer, I mean, this is what I spend my whole life doing is trying to like look through. I don't look at bricks. I don't see bricks. I see patterns, just like you're seeing here. I don't see trees. I see textures. I don't see roads. I see perspectives. I, the truth is, after a certain while, you'll get out of it and it'll become so kind of um, subconscious that you won't even, you'll, you'll start seeing trees again. You'll start seeing roads again. And you'll start seeing bricks again. Uh, but there's definitely a, a big period that you'll go through where things everything the world is just is shapes and patterns and colors and textures and contrasts and perspectives etc etc uh, well seen excellent i also appreciate the angle that you've got here uh, adds a little bit more dynamic uh, dynamic energy to it very good okay and perfect example of a pattern excellent a checkerboard okay i also appreciate the texture inside the pattern okay very good Okay, I laughed at this. This is great. So perspective, you went to the bottom and then you went to the top. So this is absolutely perspective, and you kind of cashed in um, on on the uh, you cashed in on the stairwell. Very good. What I would do um, is what would add to this a little bit is I would probably be holding my camera like out overneath. I'd wrap it around my I'd wrap the strap around my arm just in case. And if you held it out to try and get this like perfectly centered, I think that would add to it. There's a picture that I have. Um, one second, I'm going to pause and find a few. Hi, Miriam. So I'm back. Um, this picture here is what I was thinking. In regards to using lines like this, symmetry is 
absolutely essential. This image, when I actually shot it, it wasn't perfectly symmetrical. And then I took it into Photoshop and I kind of pulled it and pushed it. So I made all the lines perfectly. The, the whole thing got made perfectly symmetrical, um, perfectly geometric, uh, perfectly balanced. Okay, so I would be thinking about doing something like that. It's obviously not as grand as stairwell. But um, if you were to hold the camera further out, it would just add that. It would just add quite a bit graphically. Okay, but this is great examples of, uh, of perspective. This as well, how could you make this perspective seem even more? And the answer is get lower down. Okay, the lower down you get, the lines will converge in a more kind of in a tighter way and it will end up feeling like more perspective. Okay, balance, excellent. I, this is a very encouraging picture. Uh, let's just see. Yep, what are you shooting on? You are shooting program, that's great. Um, this is very encouraging. This shows me that you have a very um, natural sensitivity to the dynamics of the image, to the tensions of the image. It's a perfectly balanced picture. This is a great shot, really a great shot. I'd probably crop a teeny little bit off the top. Um, just be careful her hair. But that really is excellently balanced. Excellently balanced, well seen. Uh, I look at it as like kind of a, um, like a master chef. You know, you know how you, they'll taste like the food and they'll see that's what we do in an image. We're tasting the tensions and the energies of the composition and trying to feel in our mind's eye and kind of in our heart. Is the image balanced? Does it work? So our point of entry, you're going to did you learn about point of entry yet? No, next class, you're going to learn about point of entry. But anyway, we're going to the first thing we're going to see is her eyes. And now, although we've got a movement moving this way with her hands and her body the eyes are a huge arrow and it, our eyes are moving us over this way so you've ended up with a very balanced image excellent really an excellent shot okay let's look at your photo shoot so now um one of the rules of children photography is get down low okay always always be striving to get down to the level of the child here you're still shooting down a bit there is a time and a place of taking pictures shooting down on children uh, but generally we're wanting to get down low get to the same perspective as the child this is okay it's not as it's not as aesthetically pleasing as this picture the energies are the energies are less this way actually surprisingly enough because even though she's pointing uh I'm assuming it's a girl. Um, even though um, the eyes are pointing this direction, the eyes, you don't really see the eyes and the eyes really push your eye, so to speak. Uh, so it's okay, but this is definitely a more successful picture. Okay, this is cute. This is a cute shot. Um, this hand is distracting, could be very easily remedied. What could you do? What could you do? I would just say to the little girl, the big girl, put your arm on the chair over here and that would bring her arm around over here crop in and then we'd end up with a very nice composition if her arm was just like over here then you'd have a beautiful triangle and that would be a very that would be a very successful picture as it is it's a nice shot could be that we could just crop in like this it's, this is a great beginning you're going to look back in a few uh, in a few weeks and you're going to say, I can't believe I took that picture because you're going to be so much better. Just there's just a few things you're going to learn is going to make all the difference. But that's this is added. Now, the difference between this picture and this picture is that here, this line takes you out and we end up with a bang. OK, we come in over here and we go doing our eye bangs into the edge of the canvas. That drops the pleasure that we're getting from looking at the picture. Whereas over here, excuse me we've do it's kind of it, we could we could further reduce it but our eye gets caught over here before it goes down over here now the chair is bringing us back so we've actually created a really strong triangle this is definitely a more pleasing composition than this shot definitely is remember cropping in close always trying to crop in as close as you can not always but generally trying to crop in as close as you can okay very good okay another nice shot this is nicely cropped in I appreciate there's no uh, there's no space being wasted over here did you catch the focus 
think it could be as a drop yeah the focus is just a teen a little bit forward you're going to learn in the next class about focus and you'll be able to fix that quite quickly We've got a nice expression but again the the key that i'm excited about in regards to your photography is that you're aware of the energies you're aware of the balance of the of the frame and you've copped in close and it's great really this is a great beginning a great beginning this is very cute this is cute be careful again this is the same idea as it there's nothing wrong with cutting off arms and legs i mean in pictures you can cut off arms and legs the question is is where's your eye moving so the, it's actually interesting because her eye is actually coming towards us so that reduces the energy of our eye going this way you with me it's coming more kind of to you so it does move a little bit this arm our eye is coming down this arm this is basically the composition something like this so here it is a problem that her arm is cut off because our eye is going to be banging into the edge of the canvas over here okay you it's a small picture it means you've probably cropped in on this quite far as it is um but that reduces it a little bit more but say that okay this is a nice picture it's very um what's the word like very subtle uh, very gentle and passive i love all the hair over here um we'll probably take this one into light and have a look what we can do i appreciate that you made it black and white <laughs> Uh, I like the energies. We've got a downward energy here, and then all of this texture with the wind blowing adds movement. Like you learned, movement adds a lot to uh, adds a lot to the energies of the image. So I think we're going to take this one into post and just push it that little bit further and just add add some more energy to it. Um, but overall, this is a an amazing beginning, a really amazing beginning, and hold hold with it don't flake out some people flake out a lot of people flake out from the course um and i'm telling you it's you you've got an amazing uh you, you've got an amazing talent here and if you hold with it and push forward you will do fantastically let's take this one into lightroom okay Okay, so um, what I want to do here is I just want to add the energy. Really, I'm really just thinking about the hair over here. We're going to add a little bit of attention to her eye in this area here. We're going to take away attention from all of this, and we're going to add a lot of energy to her hair. Okay, so let's do. Let's start. Let's first things first. Let's take away attention from everywhere else. Okay, so I'm going to drop down my exposure and you're thinking no small what are you doing that looks ridiculous but all we're going to do is click invert and now do you see how much energy we've just added how much we've just added to her face here i think i want to crop in a little bit closer and even a drop more it's very remember cropping in close adds the two eyes which is intimacy and intensity and intensity i don't know about intense so much for this picture but definitely we want it to be more intimate so i'm really copying and close that looks looking great i want to add a little bit more um a little bit more uh attention to her face here which is with that too much that's fine okay that's great now is the bit where i want to do with her hair now what i'm going to do is using the radial tool if you look here all this red is the mask when you get into the lightroom class the workshop you'll understand what we're doing here um but so where the red is is where my effect is taking place now i darkened all of this i don't want to darken her hair so i'm going to turn to my brush within my radial tool i know this is all a little foreign to you right now but now i'm going to erase what i did with the brush with the radial tool and now hmm, that's a little too much actually oh that's the problem i'm just going to there we go now with my brush i'm going to create 
I'm with my clarity, that's great. There we go. A little too much. Let's just take it down to zero and just drop it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, I think I actually want to see I erase that there. I actually think that I want to add that back in. So I'm going to go back to the brush within the radial tool and just darken it down a little bit as it was before. That's I think a little bit better and now go back to my brush tool and add a little bit more clarity there there we go that's great okay I think I want to just open up this area of shadow a little bit here so we'll open up the shadows here Okay, and I think I'm going to also add a vignette. There we go. Okay, I think we're done. Let me just get rid of these points. So we went, this was your picture, and it's a great shot. I really appreciate the actual image. And then we just took it a little bit further by um, accentuating the great stuff and um, kind of de-emphasizing the stuff that isn't so important. Um, excellent. Okay, you've done fantastically, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you do for us next week. Okay, all the best. Good luck.